What's going on guys? So I got the parts that I wanted for my bike, not the suspension stuff, but I got some new drivetrain stuff. And in the last video I said I wasn't going to show you guys how to put it on because there's so many videos out there to show you how to put it on. Uh, so I already did put them on. Uh, I'm going to show you right now. I can walk you through a little bit how to do it. Plus I got to take my cranks back off, so I'll show you how to do that. So as you guys can see, we got this beautiful black uh cassette back here it's a it's a shimano cassette it's just black the parts inside are red which i'm kind of upset about i thought just the red ring down here was going to be red but oh well if it really bothers me i can paint it black or something back there and up front we have this beautiful blue race face narrow wide chain ring up front it's a 36 tooth and the back is 11 to 42 tooth which is really nice and uh, I actually got to take these off again because I have a chain guide I'm gonna put on um, but it's gonna require a little modification to put on um, but that's no big deal to me um, as you can see I took the front derailleur off I'm gonna be painting that black um, and then I'm gonna fill these holes that the uh, the derailleur cable came out of because it was uh, an internal cable Real quick, I can show you guys how to change your rear cassette um, just by showing you with my new cassette here because I want to put the old one back on. But uh, all you got to do is you got to take the back wheel off, however you do that on your bike. Uh, mine is just a simple axle. Leave the axle right there. Alright guys, so changing your cassette is actually super easy. You just need a few specialized things. One of them is this tool here. It's kind of funky looking. It's called a chain whip, and it looks like this. And this is just gonna hold your cassette from spinning. And then you need the uh, the special tool that goes in the center here in your free hub that will take the little screw off. So then, once you have this, you're also gonna need just an adjustable wrench. All right, so we're gonna put that there. So you see, it's gotta loosen this way but the cassette just spins so that is what the chain whip is for in the chain whip you just got to pick a gear usually you want it kind of mid-range just so it's not putting too much stress on things so you just put the chain whip on right there and you want to brace it down so then this can't spin and this is kind of in a terrible spot so we'll turn it so I got good leverage and it can spin pretty easily and I can just do it by hand and that center ring should come off the first little cog might come off too um, if that does that's alright just remember if there's any spacers or anything um, what ones they go between kind of keep things the same order you're taking them off you see like this one has this red spacer so you just want to remember what one that goes on if that were to fall off I mean since this stuff's new everything kind of stays together pretty well then these just start pulling off and uh, each ring has like little grooves so you just got to line up the grooves. There's one like super tiny groove and usually I just use that one to get them all right because that one's the most, you know, irregular. And we're just going to line everything here back up. We're going to go ahead and put this on. Doesn't look like that matters. And then we got this one. So there we go, all locked in. And now you can take this, screw it all back in, and I'll take our wrench and just torque it down. You don't want, you know, super duper tight, but you also don't want it to come off while you're riding. So we'll give it a good little crank. And that's that. That is how to change your cassette. Alright guys, so now to get the cranks off, this is on the left side of the bike. I have a giant, uh, this is an 8mm Allen key, or, I'm sorry, 
This one here is a 10 millimeter Allen key and then inside it is an 8 millimeter Allen key. So I gotta take off the 10 and then the 8. Sometimes I like to use the crank to help. And then once you get it loose, you can just spin the cranks. Because that makes everything easier. Alright. So I have I have SRAM cranks. So if you have Shimano cranks or any other brand cranks, unfortunately, I don't know if this is how they mount. I can only speak for my cranks. Watch your pedals. I use super sharp race phase pedals, so. So then we take this big screw right out. Right there. Sorry. There we are, that big screw. We'll just set that aside. There we go. So with enough determination, your cranks come off. And if you got little seals and stuff, like this, just make sure you remember what way they go. Uh, mine, they're kind of like cup shaped. The, I guess like inside of the cup goes facing the bottom bracket. Um, just if you guys have a similar style to me. All right guys, so then to get your actual chain ring off you just need to take these four bolts out and there's two more on the bottom right there um, you need two different size allen keys and they just unscrew like normal they're just like pinch bolts and then they just hold everything in there and that's how you change that and then these center ones are for a smaller cassette because I used to have a two by but now I'm only gonna do a one by so all right, guys, so then, as I was saying, I have this chain guide here. It's a Shimano Saint chain guide, and it's made to sit. Actually, I got to spin my bike around. Hang on. All right, so this Shimano Saint chain guide, it's made to sit right here um, like that, but my bike is not correctly made for this. Um, and all these individual areas need to get shaved down a tiny bit. So I actually sit up on my bottom bracket and then I'm going to have to drill two holes to fit right where the screws are. It needs to get mounted basically right there, which will be perfect. Um, and then the screws it came with actually will fit in these screw holes. I won't be using this bottom screw hole. But this top one and this bottom one, um, those will work. So I'm not really too concerned about it. Um, I just gotta get to slide over my bottom bracket. Alright guys, so from that last part of the video, I ended up getting the chain guide all sorted out and fitted on my bike, and it's looking pretty good. It took a little work to get on there, but it wasn't too bad. You can see our beautiful race face narrow wide chain ring now, and everything's back together. I just went ahead and did that. And we got the beautiful KMC chain on there with our beautiful new cassette and as you can see it's already dirty again because I was out taking it around the yard today and of course I had to get muddy um, but she's back in here on the work stand because as you can see in the mail came the cross bolt that I was telling you guys about um, in last week's video from the truck slash and I got it all fitted in here and I'm taking measurements so hopefully soon this shock will be out of here and we'll be getting a new Fox shock in there very soon. So everything is coming together very nicely. So there we go guys. That is pretty much part one of all of the changes I'm making to my Trek Remedy during this little bit of an off season winter time. Um, Getting the drivetrain sorted was definitely one of the huge things I wanted to get done and getting that rear shock Absolutely dialed with a new shock. I'm, I'm gonna get the Fox DP X2 um, Which is a really good trail enduro shock um, It's a little different than the regular X2 the X2 is like Downhill specific which I'm not doing strictly downhill stuff on this bike 
um, and that's not the type of trails around my house. So the, the DPX2 will fit my needs a little better. But that's going to be in another video. This was all about the drivetrain, so I hope you guys enjoyed uh, what we did here today, and I'll catch you guys later.